And so the question is, calculate the moment of inertia of the solid generated when the area bounded by the curve x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. For this domain 0 to 3 rotates about the x-axis. Right, so now we have to recognize that that graph is in the form x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Right, so this is supposed to be a minus a there. Right, so your x-intercepts will be plus a and minus a. Y-intercept will be positive and negative. You can identify it from the standard equation or you can work it out. How will we work out the x-intercepts and y-intercepts? If you want to work out the x-intercepts, you let y equal to 0. So you'll have x squared is equal to 9. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. Also, for y-intercepts, y will equal to plus or minus the square root of 4. All right, so let's sketch our graph. Alright, so what are the x-intercepts here? By inspection. It will be positive 3 and negative 3. Your y-intercept will be? That will be a positive 2 and a negative 2. Alright, let's label our graph. x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. Right, so now, what does the question state? Rotates about the x-axis. Okay, let's write that down. So here we know it states rotates, the area rotates about the x-axis. So therefore, you are going to be finding an x. That is your reference axis. So how do you identify the reference axis? It is the axis of rotation. Okay. If the question stated rotates about the y-axis, then you will be finding i y. Okay. Now, let's label our diagram. We know what we're going to find. But now, the formula that we're going to use depends on whether we are using delta x or delta y. Let's start with delta x. <coughs> Alright, so let's say we are using delta x. If you are using delta x now, let's write that down. How is delta x related to the reference axis? Is it perpendicular or is it parallel? So delta x is perpendicular to the reference axis. If it is perpendicular, so therefore, we are going to use the formula moment of inertia is equal to mass times k squared. Also, volume What method will we use for volume when we are working on the volume? If it's perpendicular just to the reference axis we are going to be using the disk method. Right, so now let's start. So we are finding delta i x. We know it's perpendicular, so therefore we are using the first formula which is mass, which is delta m times k squared where k 
is equal to the radius all divided by root 2. So now, what will the radius be measured in terms of? We are rotating around which axis here? X. So your radius is the distance from the center to the circumference. What are we measuring? X or Y? Y. We're measuring Y. So your radius is in terms of Y, so that will be Y over root 2. Now, what do we know? Mass, we know that mass is equal to density times volume. M is equal to PV, density times volume. So delta M is equal to P times delta Vx. Delta Vx because I'm rotating about the x-axis. So that's M is equal to PV times your K. K is y over root 2 and that is all squared. Now, what about the formula for volume? If we are using the disk method, the disk method volume is equal to area of base times your perpendicular height. That is the disk method. Okay, so it's going to be pi, your radius, r squared, that will be y squared times delta x. So that is volume here. You can see that? Multiplied by y over root 2 all squared, that will be y squared over 2. Okay, so now let's take our constants p pi divide by 2 there, so that's p pi over 2. What do we have? y squared times y squared there, which is y to the power 4 multiplied by our delta x. So therefore, our total total ix will equal to p e pi over 2. We are integrating with respect to x, so therefore it will be b and a, that is y to the power 4, and that becomes dx. Now <clears throat> comes the substitution. What's your b and a? What's your b and a here? The question was specific here. We are only interested in the domain from 0 to 3. Okay. Not from minus 3 to 3, just from 0 to 3. You were told that in the question. You can see that? So there's your 3 and there's your 0. Now, this is y to the power 4. And we are integrating with respect to x. So what must we do? We need to get y in terms of x. So you need to go back to the original equation, manipulate that equation, substitute, and integrate. Let me give you a few minutes. Let's see if you remember your N3 work here. Manipulating a formula. Get y to the power 4. A few minutes. <laughs> Right, so we have to manipulate this equation. This is y to the power 4. Let's have a look at the equation that we have. We have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. Alright, so now I can transpose, so that will be y squared over 4 would equal to 1 minus x squared over 9. Now, it depends on what did you do after this here. Maybe you just cross multiplied by 4 and left it as 1 minus x squared over 9 in brackets. It's fine. Your integration will be a little bit different, but you'll come to the same answer. Now, <coughs> the best way to do it is to find your LCD here first. Right, so what will your LCD be? LCD on the right hand side, it will be 9, so that will be 9 minus x squared over 9. 
And now I can cross multiply or multiply by 4 on both sides to get rid of the 4 in the denominator. So therefore, y squared is equal to 4 times 9 minus x squared over 9. I prefer to take out my fraction. So that will be 4 over 9 multiplied by 9 minus x squared. Okay, you're going to see how it works out better when we substitute here. But now, what is this here? That's y squared. From our exponent laws, we y to the power 4. That's what we need. What do we have? y squared. So y to the power 4 is the same as y squared all squared. So therefore, I need to square y squared. That means I'm squaring the left hand side. So therefore, I will have to square the right hand side. So now, let's see the result of this here. So y squared all squared is y to the power 4. So here, our exponents, fractions, I can square 4 over 9 and I'll multiply by the square of 9 minus x squared. So 4 over 9 all squared will be 16, 9 squared is 81, 9 minus x squared all squared. So 9 squared is 81 and then our middle term will be minus 18 x squared. The last term will be plus x to the power 4. Alright, I noticed some other N6 students in the previous class, just one or two. You're not forgetting the middle term. You just square the first, you square the last. Okay, you cannot be forgetting that. So let's now transfer this information here. So we got our 16 over 81 there. That is 81 minus 18 x squared plus x to the power 4. There's our dx. Okay. So now I have a constant of 16 over 81. I'm just going to multiply it by my constant in the front. So, let's see what happens here. So we got, let's see, that's 16 pi times p all over 2 times a of 81. And I'm just taking my 16 over 81, transferring it here, multiplying pi p times 16, 2 times 81. Now, it's easy for me to integrate. There's no fractions here. Can you see that? So, if I integrate, I will integrate 81, which is 81x minus 18x to the power 3 over 3 plus x to the power 5 over 5. What are we substituting here? Um, 3 and 0. So here we will get 8 pi over 81 p. And now, Use your calculator, what do we get here? Substitute 3 inside. If you did not find the LCD, your answer will look a bit different. I'm talking about uh, not the final answer. Your integration will be a little bit different, but the final answer must be the same. If it's not the same, you manipulated wrong. Okay. Right, so substitute into my um, fractions here, what do I get? Only the 3. What do we get? 648 over 5. 
So here, when we substitute 3 into everything, we get 6, 4, 8 over 5. Here you're gonna, you can see that if you substitute 0, it will be a 0. Now, we are going to multiply 6, 4, 8 over 5 times 8 pi over 81. Multiply that by 8 pi over 81, what do we get there? What's it? 64 over 5 times pi. Don't forget times p. Now, give it to me round enough to three decimal places. 40,212p. That is the correct answer. So here our answer is in terms of the density P. There will be questions in the exam where they ask you to write down your final answer in terms of the mass. But we're going to deal with that in the next example. But if, if you want to try it out here, then we know that mass is equal to density times volume. So therefore, Mass divided by volume is equal to density. I can replace P with M over V. Then my answer will be in terms of the mass. I will have to work out V individually. But we're going to deal with that in the next example. Now, let's take the second option here. What's the second option? Let's deal with the same example. Alright, let's have a look at the second option of doing this one, second technique. So here, we sketched the graph, we decided to use delta x. Now, not everyone thinks the same. What happens if you decided to use delta y? So if I decided to use delta y, <coughs> what do we know? Delta Y is now, is it perpendicular or parallel to the reference axis? It is going to be parallel to the reference axis. So therefore, I'm going to use the formula I is equal to mass times the distance squared, distance from the reference axis. Okay, let's see what happens here. So, delta i x, that does not change. The question states the reference axis is the x axis here. You can see that. So now, mass, which is delta m, times the distance from the x-axis. The distance from the x-axis, what are we measuring going up? Y. So it's going to be y squared. 
what is mass equal to? Mass is equal to density times volume. So therefore it's going to be P times delta Vx. This is not changing. You can see that Vx because we are rotating around the x-axis. And this is times y squared. So now, the volume, how will we work out the volume here? How do we work out the volume of this one? We know that delta y is parallel to the reference axis. So, we need to use the shell method. The shell method is circumference times height times your thickness. So, we are rotating around the x-axis. So, your circumference is equal to 2 pi r. You are still rotating around the x-axis. Your radius is in terms of what? What is your radius in terms of? You're rotating around the x-axis. The distance from there to there is still going to be y. Okay. Your radius is in terms of y. Okay. So now, let's write it down. So that's going to be P times formula for volume. Shell method is circumference, which is going to be 2 pi radius, which is Y, times the height. The distance from here to here is the height, which is going to be X times the thickness there, which is delta y multiplied by don't forget this is y squared can you see that let's write down okay let's multiply our constants we got 2 pi times your p there which is 2 pi p what do we have here now we got an x here then we got y times y squared, which is y to the power 3. Here's your delta y. Let's write down the total now. So now, that's delta y. That means we are using y values. So that would be d and c. And that will be x times y cubed dy. What do we have to do now? <coughs> this is dy. That means we are integrating with respect to y. We need to get x in terms of y. So what must we do now? We need to go back to this original equation here. Can you see that? We need to get x in terms of y. So, we got x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. So, therefore, x squared over 9 is equal to 1 minus y squared over 4. I'm going to find my LCD there first. x squared over 9 is equal to 4 minus y squared over 4. So x squared is equal to 9 over 4 multiplied by 4 minus y squared. But now, this is not x squared. This is x. So what do we do? We find the square root, so we know that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 over 4, and that's 4 minus y squared there. So, I can find the square root, we're going back to N3 again, our exponents. So the square root of 9 over 4 is what? Do we need a calculator? Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, times the square root. Can I find the square root of 4 and write down 2 then? No, that's impossible. Right, so that will be just the square root of 4 minus y squared. But now, this is the equation of the entire ellipse. 
Are we dealing with the whole ellipse here? No, remember yesterday's example too. What are we dealing with now? We are only dealing with this part here. Okay. We will take this curve here, just this part here, and we are rotating it about the x-axis. Okay. Because remember, this area here is identical to the bottom area. Remember the example we did yesterday too, with the parabola. This area is identical, the x-axis is like the axis of symmetry. So now, when we are working out volume, we're just going to take the volume from 0 to 2 and rotate it. It will cover this part here automatically. Think, imagine this, take this part and rotate it. It's covering this part automatically. Can you see that? So, now, that is one thing. What is the equation of just this part here? On this side, it is the positive x-axis here. Can you see that? Only positive x values. This side is the negative side. So the equation that we're dealing with, we cannot substitute both plus and minus here. We need to understand on the right hand side, x is equal to plus 3 over 2 times the square root of 4 minus y squared. Not the minus there. Okay. We are dealing with from 0 to 3. So let's substitute now. Let's see what happens. So now we got our 2 pi p. We are integrating. We need the y values there. So the y value is from 0 to 2. Not from minus 2 to 2. Okay, from 0 to 2. So there is your 2 and 0. What is x? x is 3 over 2 multiplied by the square root of 4 minus y squared times what do we have there? y cubed dy okay let me just simplify this further if I, multi if I, can, I can see here that 2 and 2 will cancel or 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 2 it's the same thing which is 3 so I will get 3 pi p that's 2 and 0 the square root of 4 minus y squared times y cubed dy this is a much more difficult option to deal with okay because now look at the integration that we're going to be dealing with here there's no exact derivative here can you see that All right so we have to go back to our n5 special cases so, we're going to use a U substitution. Let's see how this is going to work. So, let's see. If I let U equal to 4 minus Y squared, let's see what happens. If I let U equal to 4 minus Y squared, so then DU DY, the derivative of 4 minus Y squared will be what? Minus 2Y. So therefore, dy is equal to du all divided by minus 2y. Right. So now, let's substitute. If I now substitute here, let's see what happens. So our i... <coughs> x is equal to 3 pi p we got our 2 and 0 then we got the square root of 4 minus y squared which is the square root of what is 4 minus y squared now? it is u multiplied by y cubed multiplied by dy but what is dy now? dy is du divided by minus 2y what happens here? y cubed divided by y right, so my constant I'm going to take it and write it on the left so that will be minus 3 pi over 2p there's my 2 and 0 there 
Here's my square root of u. y cubed divided by y will give me y squared and that is du. We have a problem now. The problem is we are integrating with respect to u and there's still y there. So remember our special cases, you go back now. You go back to your u substitution. If u was equal to 4 minus y squared, can I get y squared in terms of u? Simple. You manipulate this formula. So if I take minus y squared to the left, it will be y squared is equal to, what will y squared equal to? 4 minus u. Let's replace this. So that is going to equal to minus 3 pi over 2 times p. That is your 2 and 0. We got u to the power half times y squared. y squared is now 4 minus u. And that is du. Now from here, it's going to be easy. We just have to multiply this out. Can you see that? So that will be minus 3 pi over 2 times p. Again, exponent loss. 4 times u to the power half. That will be 4 u to the power half. Minus u to the power half times u. When you are multiplying, you add the exponents. If the bases are the same, 1 plus half, that will be 3 over 2 du. Now, we can integrate with respect to u. Integrate 4u to the power half, that will be 4u, half plus 1 will be 3 over 2, all divided by 3 over 2, minus u, 3 over 2 plus 1, that will be 5 over 2, all divided by 5 over 2. Here's my 2 and 0. I'm going to substitute back for you and then substitute my limit step. So 4 divided by 3 over 2, 4 times 2, that will be 8 over 3. And 1 divided by 5 over 2 is the same as 2 over 5. Substitute back, what was u? There's u, this u was 4 minus y squared and that is 4 minus y squared. Alright, so we are going to substitute 2 here. 